Welcome friends to my channel StatNP where we have started a lecture series on sample survey. This is the seventh part of the series and in this part we shall discuss about uh, stratified random sampling. Okay, so in the previous part we have discussed about simple random sampling and uh, we get uh, the idea that in case of simple random sampling each and every unit of the population has an equal probability of being selected in the sample from the population okay that means there is a no case of biasness so that uh, each and every unit of the population has an equal probability of being selected in the sample and that's why the sample uh, is a good representative of the population okay now what is stratified random sampling so you can see that stratified random sampling is a better version of simple random sampling or it will give us the more representative sample in comparison to the sample by using the technique of simple random sampling okay now let's understand how we can get a more representative sample by using the technique of stratified random sampling okay so let's start so now what is stratification stratification means division into layers okay stratification means division into layers now suppose for example we have a population of size capital n okay now we'll divide the whole population according to some criteria into different parts okay and these different parts are called strata okay and from each of the parts we will collect our sample okay and um, some of the sample from all the different parts should be is equal to the sample size for which we want to collect uh, our information for the study okay so suppose for example our population size is capital n then we will divide the whole population like this n1 n2 n3 nk so what is nk this is the number of division of the population okay how many divisions are there how many layers are there in our uh, population okay and these divisions or layers are called what strata okay now we will collect accordingly the sample from this uh, population the sample from this population and so on okay and we collect the sample from all these strata by using the technique of simple random sampling so that each and every unit of this uh, population in this strata has an equal probability of being selected in our sample okay for this strata that means here also each and every unit of the population has an equal probability of to being selected in our uh, sample okay so the main theme of stratification is that we are dividing the whole population in different parts or different strata and from the strata we are collecting our sample and collecting our sample by using the technique of simple random sampling okay and um, now some facts are there which we have to take care when we uh, divide the population in different strata okay that means how we divide the strata what is the strategy for dividing the whole population in different parts uh, or different strata okay so we will divide the population into different strata in such a way that each of the strata are homogeneous within themselves okay each of the strata are homogeneous within themselves but heterogeneous between themselves okay that means units within the strata are homogeneous okay so uh, homogeneous units are grouped together in one strata okay uh, so that uh, the units between the strata are not uh, homogeneous they are heterogeneous okay so you have to take care of this fact we have to divide the whole strata in such a way that units within the strata are homogeneous but units between the strata are heterogeneous okay now the criteria which enables us 
to classify various uh, sampling units into different strata is termed as stratifying factor okay that means the criteria which enables us to classify the sampling units of different strata is termed as stratifying factor some of the commonly used stratifying factors are uh, age sex uh, educational level income level geographical area economic status and so on okay so a stratifying factor is called effective if it divides the given population into different uh, strata which are homogeneous or nearly homogeneous within themselves and the units in different strata are um, as unlike as possible okay that means uh, um, the stratifying factor will be more effective uh, when if we use that uh, stratifying factor and uh, after using that stratifying factor we get the uh, strata that means we get the units within, within the strata are more homogeneous but the units between the strata are heterogeneous okay in that case we can say that the stratifying factor is a effective one okay so we have to take care of the fact uh, which uh, stratifying factor we should use for uh, dividing our population into different strata okay so that we will get a um, effective result okay so this is one of the fact we have to take care okay now if uh, in our study we are going to collect the information for a particular uh, character okay that means if only one character is there in that case uh, uh, it is easy to divide uh, the whole population according to that characteristic into different strata okay but if uh, in our study different characteristics are there okay that means more than one characteristics are there in that case uh, it will be somehow difficult to uh, divide the population into uh, different strata uh, on what basis okay that means uh, now uh, some question arises so which particular character will take care for dividing the whole population into different strata so in that case we will use our previous information or subject expert knowledge okay to divide the whole population into uh, different strata that means which characteristic will be a more effective one to divide the population in various parts or different strata okay that, so we have to take in care of this fact in case of stratified random sampling okay so so the first uh, difference between the stratified random sampling and simple random sampling is that in case of simple random sampling uh, the population is there and we collect the sample from the population by using the condition that each and every unit of the population has an equal probability of being selected in our sample so in case of simple random sampling we are not uh, dividing the population into different parts or layers okay we are collecting the units randomly from the population to the sample okay now in case of stratified random sampling we first divide the whole population into different strata according to some stratifying factor okay and uh, uh, from the different um, strata we then uh, collect our sample by using the technique of simple random sampling so that each and every unit of the population in different strata has an equal probability of being selected in our sample okay so here what is happening in case of stratified random sampling there is a chance that we may cover the whole uh, corner of the population okay but in case of simple random sampling it may happen that uh, some parts of the population may be uh, not counted in our uh, uh, sample it may happen okay but in case of stratified random sampling there is a big chance that each and every corner of the population has um, come in our uh, sample okay so that you can say that because of that reason uh, it will give us a more representative sample in compared to the uh, simple random sampling okay now the question arises how we determine the size of the sample for different strata okay so this is one of the question this is one of the important question in case of stratified random sampling how we determine the size of the sample size of the sample for different strata 
okay so by using the method of proportional allocation and optimum allocation we can determine the uh, size of the sample for difference data in case of stratified random sampling okay so now what is um, proportional allocation so proportional allocation means where the ratio of the sample size to the population size for each of the stratum is uh, constant okay is constant that means uh, if um, if a strata is there if a strata uh, that means if a stratum is there which is of bigger size in that case the sample size uh, drawing from that uh, stratum will also be bigger okay in comparison to the strata which has a lower size isn't it that means suppose for example uh, for strata 1 our population size is uh, more in compared to the strata 2 that means n1 is larger than n2 in that case uh, the sample size for strata 1 is also be more than the sample size for strata 2 okay that means the size of the population for different strata will also be responsible for the sample size for different strata okay if the size of the population of the stratum is large then the population then the sample drawn from that particular strata which will also be large in compared to the strata which has lower population size in compared to the strata which has um, greater population uh, size okay so this is proportional allocation that means uh, here the ratio of the sample size and uh, population size is constant for each stratum okay and now what is optimum allocation so in case of optimum allocation there are three condition i can say that uh, first one is uh, uh, suppose for example you have a fixed stand that means our sample size is fixed uh, that means we have to collect uh, the sample for that uh, given sample size okay so in that case what we will do we will try to we will try to minimize our variance for the estimate okay that means if our sample size is given to us that means we have to collect the data for that sample size in that case we will try to minimize our variance of the estimate okay um, as much as we can okay so this is the first condition second condition is that if um, we have a fixed uh, cost fixed total cost for conducting our study suppose for example we have a fixed total cost for conducting our whole study in that case also within that fixed total cost we will try to minimize our variance of the estimate as much as we can okay and third one is that uh, suppose for example we have a fixed desired uh, precision and that means we want to conduct the study in such a way that our precision is fixed one that means we can just tolerate uh, up to this uh, precision or we can tolerate up to this variance in our study okay suppose if uh, the variance is fixed already fixed in advance uh, for our particular study in that case we will try to minimize our cost we will try to minimize our cost to get that uh, fixed uh, desired uh, precision for the study okay that means um, for getting that fixed desired precision we will try to minimize our cost of the study as much as we can so uh, this is the way we can determine the size of the sample for different strata in case of stratified random sampling okay so from this overall discussion of stratified random sampling you can have an idea that uh, uh, why stratified random sampling gives us a more representative sample than the sample by using the technique of simple random sampling okay because you can see that here we may cover the whole population in a more beautiful way in compared to the simple random sampling because we are dividing the whole population into different strata and from different strata we are going to collect our information okay but in case of simple random sampling we are just uh, collecting our information from the population by using the 
technique that each and every unit of the population has an equal probability of being selected so it may happen that some area of the population are uh, not um, involved in our sample in case of simple random sampling okay so this is the difference between these two techniques stratified random sampling and simple random sampling and why we should use stratified random sampling if we have uh, the facility to use uh, stratified random sampling for collecting the sample from the population okay so this is the basic concept of stratified random sampling and um, i want to convey the concept of stratified random sampling okay i am not going to convey the mathematical details to you because mathematical details are already given in all the books so i'll just try to give the concept of this uh, technique so i hope we people understand what is the concept behind stratified random sampling what is the concept behind simple random sampling okay so if you understand then please like share and subscribe my channel and then uh, please comment also um, if there is any query uh, regarding anything so please um, like share and uh, subscribe my channel and thank you thank you for watching my video thank you thank you so much